Hey guys, welcome to Solo React Talk. Uh, today I'm going to be reacting to a new era of Warcraft storytelling, The War Within, as well as Chris Metzen on the World Soul Saga, World of Warcraft cast. Uh, these are the two videos that I found on the World of Warcraft YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to be reacting to them, and of course they're related to The War Within. And yeah, let's start. Hmm. Oh yes, remember if you want to check out the original videos as well as World of Warcraft's YouTube channel, the links are going to be in the description below. Okay, the first one is a new era of Warcraft storytelling, The War Within. Right, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Welcome to a special edition of WowCast. Thank you so much for joining us today. The team is heads down on wrapping up the expansion ahead of launch, but today we are joined by a few incredible guests. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Maria Hamilton. I'm the Associate Design Director on WoW. Hello, my name is Morgan Day. I am one of the Associate Game Directors working on The War Within. And I'm Taryn Gregory, uh, the Cinematic Narrative Director for World of Warcraft. Hello. So how does the team even approach something as ambitious as the World Soul Saga? In a word, uh, enthusiastically. <laughs> uh, you know, we have a really unique opportunity here with the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft that's fast approaching. We really wanted to take a step back and reevaluate how we develop our expansions. In the past, we might have come at it from the perspective of, well, we've done this a couple times. How did we do it in the past? And moving forward philosophically, we really want to take a fresh new approach and you know, take our community's excitement and feedback and really make sure that's at the forefront of all of our development moving forward. We wanted to build upon the successes of Dragonflight, right? We felt like we built a really strong foundation there and take a lot of those successes and, and look to achieve new goals as we move into the World Soul Saga and the War Within. But you know what, with the release of one of the latest trailers or cinematic trailers, I wasn't really connecting with it. Um, if you guys watch my World of Warcraft cinematics and trailers reactions, you will know the specific trailer I'm talking about. Uh, the one that was showing the Paladin, the Earthen, uh, also... Who's that queen of the Nerubian? arachnid spider people i forgot her name now <laughs> but her uh and it was also it was it looked like a troll yeah it looked like a troll or a night elf i'm not entirely sure what type of species was she but she was dancing around and she was you know doing something with the plants <laughs> i'm not sure what but yeah that specific trailer i i wasn't really connecting with it like all the other cinematic trailers for World of Warcraft. This one, it was just unique in its own way, you know? Um, but yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Some of those ideas would be allowing the players to have new ways to express themselves and make sure that there's a ton of variety in the content that they're experiencing in World of Warcraft. Additionally, we wanna make sure that we're bringing World of Warcraft to as broad an audience as possible. And we're really working to build new accessibility features and also just new exciting ideas that we also want to bring to the table. Finally, you know, guiding us and crafting this epic adventure is the narrative, right? That's at the forefront of all of our ideas and all of the you know, stories that we're developing along the way. We always like to plan ahead um, when we're developing World of Warcraft, but this time is a bit different, right? It's, it's multiple expansions all at once that we're really trying to plant the seeds for these future ideas as we move forward in the World Soul Saga. And at times, you know, I've been in meetings with our creative direction group, and it can be a bit of a challenge to keep all of these ideas uh, in my head all at once. You know, there's a lot of threads that are flying around, but it's, I think the team, you know, is really energized by that opportunity to kind of tell such an epic story. And thankfully, you know, Taryn is here, and he's gonna talk a bit about all of those awesome ideas as we move forward. And, you know, he's kind of the expert of pulling all of those threads and bringing them all together. It's kind of like the conspiracy meme sometimes with the, mm -hmm. the dots well, and the right threads. In the and <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's connecting the dots, okay. What are you most excited for, Taryn, with the War Within story? Well, 
working on World of Warcraft is always <laughs> exciting. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I love working on this world uh, and with this team. It's been really, really, really exciting getting to work with Chris Metzen again after his return and setting the vision for the World Soul Saga, this new chapter of Warcraft that's going to take us through the next few updates. As Morgan mentioned, right, like during Dragonflight, we feel that that represented a lot of change, a lot of uh, lessons applied, lessons learned. Looking back on Shadowlands, I believe that we took a lot from that story and developed new ways that we were going to present our characters, our villains, our storylines. And Dragonflight was the first step, but I believe that War Within is a great leap forward in our ambitions to create a compelling narrative, uh, bring our characters to the forefront, and really open the first chapter in the next pivotal moment of World of Warcraft that will set the stakes for the story that will unfold throughout the World Soul Saga. What would you say are some of the narrative aspirations of the saga? Well, I feel that we've set the bar really high and we want to meet those expectations and even exceed them. Really trying to create something in the vein of the essence of Warcraft or the best of Warcraft, bringing that to the forefront. The ways we're going to do that is really investing in our world and story. We always say world and story are some of the most critical parts of the appeal of World of Warcraft. But what does that really mean? You know, our world is a character. It is fleshed out through all means of small stories, big stories. But we want people to be invested in our characters. We want them to go on the adventure with them to learn more. I believe we have some really compelling stories with some of our most known characters, some of our lesser known characters and some new characters that we're going to meet along the way. Yeah, like this one in particular, this new character who I've never seen before. Um, but yeah, apparently she's going to be in it as well as that earthen and that lady who I think is a half troll, half night elf uh, being. And yeah, really new characters are coming in. Well, I like them. I don't know, you know, because I've, I've been with the mainstay characters for a very long time <laughs> but we'll see we'll see where these new characters take us something that i love about the world soul saga and you know we were talking about the 20th anniversary earlier is that's a really unique strength of world of warcraft right we have characters that you've literally grown up with right like <laughs> at the launch of world of warcraft anduin i think was literally in a crib right <laughs> uh, he, he was he, he was, was a little boy he was a little boy you know uh, have you seen my father yeah exactly <laughs> and we've watched him grow from you know that boy to the boy prince to now the king that he is today and this journey is going to continue to take characters like Anduin and continue to see them evolve and others as well like Dagram plays a huge role in the war within and that's another character that was just a little baby when we yeah. started out and they're going to be taking a much larger role in this epic saga. Yeah. I think another lesson we learned uh, is you know cadence and delivery. Um, there were some instances where it felt maybe like the story was very start and stop or people had to wait around for a long time for resolutions to long established storylines um, and so in trying to address that uh, we're really looking at, looking at the saga as the opportunity to resolve more storylines, bring up new questions, um, drive the story forward and one of the things that helps us do that now is the improved content cadence that has been established in Dragonflight. This gives us some really, really handy tools for being able to have smaller updates between larger updates in which we can have the story move forward, we can focus on individual characters, flesh out their stories more, or even just give the sense that the world is always moving forward and that there's something always new to see in World of Warcraft when it comes to our narrative. Oh, that's nice. Okay, yeah. More investment into the characters that are in this world. You know, give them their own little arcs of stories that you, as the character player, will also be in. Um, and yeah, and then of course, all of it will somehow cumulate towards the end, where all of these characters, uh, you know, whatever you have to go through with them is going to be part of you and you're going to value them even more as you continue with the world. World Saga, World Soul Saga, yeah. Hmm. Speaking of characters, Zalatath is everywhere. She is amazing. <laughs> what do you think about our new villain? Zalatath is very much an interesting character, and I'm super excited to see the reception that people she's have so had cool. since we uh, announced that she's going to be, you know, very much starring in the beginning of the War Within. When it comes to our villains and the development of our villains, uh, we have learned many lessons. We, we feel that maybe there's been a couple instances where we didn't quite do the work to earn them out or introduce them to our players in a way that felt organic or compelling. Zalatath is an opportunity to have this character that for those who played Shadow Priest and Legion 
it was a very compelling character. She's marked mm -hmm. very, very highly in terms of like kind of fan favorite, but also lesser known. And that's yeah. I think I'm on the side of lesser known because I've ne I don't know anything about this lady. You know, I only knew of her existence when they announced the war within, and I had to go look up on other YouTube uh, videos, especially from Platinum Wow, uh, pertaining to Zalateth the blade and then Zalateth, the humanoid form of herself, you know, and how she came to be, what was she doing on Azeroth this whole time, you know, why is she only starting now with her plans and why didn't she start before? You know, these are the type of questions I had. And yeah, really, her, her character is still pretty much of a mystery to me. But what if there's one thing I do know is that she is very uh, manipulative, very cunning, and she's an organizer. She's an organizer who understands her enemy inside and out. Compared to her enemy, they don't really know her that much. They just call her the Harbinger, they just call her Zalateth, but they don't really know or understand her and her motives, probably. Yeah. Hmm. It's kind of a magic combination of like, hey, let's take this character and bring them into the spotlight and give them a, a really compelling arc. And much like we had done throughout Dragonflight in the development of the primal incarnates, like Aridacron and Viranoth and Farak, we put a lot of effort into bringing them into the story one step at a time, introducing them to the player, giving them compelling motivations, making them a dimensional character, making uh, their desires, and making them real, real people uh, that we can understand and get along with. And Zalatath is now on her own trajectory to step into the limelight of World of Warcraft, and we're hoping to meet all of those same things. And I really feel that Zalatath is going to be a very interesting character as we watch her story unfold. I've been quite both uh, surprised and excited by you know the reception of Zalatath. I think having kind of those foundations where there's some of the community that's like, oh, you're just getting to know this person, <laughs> yeah. where other people have, like Taryn mentioned, have been kind of questing with her or experiencing her story in the past. And there's also a lot of really fun stuff and opportunities as we are able to plan so far ahead now where we can plant these seeds knowing, you know, this is the destination. And as we get, as we're moving towards that direction, what are things that we can kind of plant? And maybe the players find them, maybe they see it and maybe they don't. There was some text that showed up in Dalaran where they were talking <laughs> about like, oh, wait a minute, that's new. What's going on here? And they were kind of piecing together some stuff. One thing I love that we, we set forth to do was mid Dragon flight, you know, in the spirit of wanting to seed these stories sooner, to have people along for the ride, to notice the little details. And there was this moment uh, with Aridacron when he was escaping through a portal. And in development, we had just slipped this little shadow, you know, elven silhouette in the background of the portal. And a lot of people were like, no one's ever going to notice that. And we're like, that's the idea. The <laughs> idea is that it's so subtle that when they discover it, it's going to generate all this conversation. And it did, yeah. right? There was all this conversation about Zalatath, and everyone started to get really excited. And I did not see her. <laughs> I did not see her in that cinematic. I, I can't remember if I did. Yeah, no. Definitely, I didn't see her. I just saw Rita Crown going into that portal, and that was it. So that kind of started building a slow burn on everyone uh, getting Zaltath into the conversation. So by the time she was announced at BlizzCon, it actually felt like, oh, yes, we've been expecting this. Obviously. Uh, obviously, <laughs> right? So it's just fun ways that we're trying to seed and plant and prepare the audience uh, for what's ahead. I, th I think one of the things that makes uh, Zaltath really, really interesting for players is there's an awful lot of them that want to be her buddy, who, who, who don't see her as a villain, <laughs> right? So no, no villain is the villain of their story, they're the hero of their story. And that makes this interesting too, because we can play with that a little bit, we can make sure that we're leaning into it. You know, is she really the villain? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the world is just as important as the villains. Maria, what approach have you taken for world building? I mean, as Taryn pointed out, and I think we've talked about in the past, the world really is one of our main characters. And it's really important that when we go into these different zones that we've created, they feel alive, they feel appropriate to their cultures that live within them. Unexpectedly, perhaps, uh, we, we decided to make this a very vertical expansion. So we're starting off on the surface in the Isle of Dorne, which has your classic plains, your beautiful grasslands, and big city, Dornegal, this is where our earthen live, uh, trying to carry out the edicts of, of the Titans. So the Isle of Dorne is a new uh, 
island in, on Azeroth. Okay, all right. And this is where the Corway is located. So we go down the Corway and we get down into the Ringing Deeps. And the Ringing Deeps is where the machine speakers, the earthen that are dedicated to tending the machines and the, the vast works of the Titans live and work. And so where we're really starting to subvert expectations is when you go from the ringing deeps into Holofall. It's a huge, huge area. You can't tell that it's underground. You can't tell that it's a cavern. It's lit by this enormous crystal. How has this place survived during the cataclysm? You know, Deathwing was turning this planet inside out, shaking it apart with his return. How is this place still so stable? How is it that this is still a massive ceiling above this entire chasm underground? You know, there are some places that should have scars from the time of, uh, you know, Deathwing causing havoc on, on, on Azeroth during the Cataclysm. They should be. Just like on the surface, there should be uh, you know, evident change underground. And the earthen should also be talking about it. Like, you know, we had one of the biggest natural disasters to ever occur, you know, in our subterranean civilization. It it almost brought us to our knees. Hopefully they do have something like that, but I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> and then as you descend, you're going to go down into the last kingdom of the Nerubians, into Ajkahet. And this is all about danger and dark elegance. And the whole area is, is meant to serve as an opportunity to learn about the Nerubians and their big city there. Their last city, probably. Which has been built upon centuries and centuries and centuries of decay. They just build the city on top of itself. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected that going vertically down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's one of the things that uh, we learned from Zerolek Cavern in Dragonflight. We knew we ma were making an underground space. We knew we wanted players to be able to transition seamlessly into that space. The idea was to sort of give you this increasingly wondrous, joyful descent um, and make the world really feel alive, make it feel like it, it fits with those cultures that are living there. The reactions that we saw from people playing on beta when they first entered Hall of All, which is just amazing. Yeah, I love the attention to detail in all the zones. I mean, you just mentioned Hall of Fall, but like something that it took me a while to even notice it, but when I did it, like blew my mind was like you mentioned, there's that huge crystal underground and it's it's the sole light source. So if you look around the zone, all of the trees and the plants are actually facing that light source. Like if you think about plants in, out in the world, they kind of follow the sun. Well, what if the sun was static? We have a desire to help make everything feel right. Everything needs to feel like it makes sense. So for the Arathi, they have these airships. And so all of their tables and chairs and props and things that are scattered around their city, they all have these brackets on them because they would have been mounted on the airships when they traveled. Another good example is the earthen. So the earthen are made of stone and their beds, entertainingly, look almost like a barbecue because they like to be warm. So there's fiery coals underneath them. That's cool, that is so cool. On their beds and you can see them. One of the other things I love about the earthen is they actually have these like memory crystals because they themselves are almost more of a construct, but this memory crystal has, you know, their experiences, their memories, their, you know, life story in them. And early on in the campaign, we learn about that memory crystal. And Dagran, who's quite the little tinkerer, finds this fascinating. And there's like a whole quest line where you get to learn about these memory crystals and you kind of put them back in the archive and you get to learn about this culture as you're kind of experiencing through the lens of these memory crystals. And then So could you probably like, you know, upload the information from, or should I say, yeah, yeah, upload the information from the crystals into someone's mind and they would have all the experience, all the knowledge, all the skills from that previous uh, earthen who downloaded his or hers, uh, you know, information into the crystal. Hmm. And for the Nerubians, we have a really funny local story, a really funny sort of take on what would happen if you encountered a Nerubian who had a fear like arachnophobia, but they're terrified of bipedal creatures because they don't have enough limbs and it's just creepy and it freaks them out. And there's that's cool. So many more examples. Uh, the team really had a great time building out these cultures and these stories. One of the things Morgan mentioned earlier was making it easier for players to play the way they want to play. How is that being reflected in the content we're building? 
Yeah, I mean, we uh, certainly learned a lot from Dragonflight. One of the areas that we uh, started to improve on and, and now have continued is uh, some UI improvements around both the icons on quests in the world, but also the quest journal. We've got some cool filtering that will let people find the kinds of quests that they're looking for and the kinds of activities. We have some great UI elements when you hover over markers on the map that let you see what sort of reward there might be and how much time it's going to be before something starts for, for events, for example. Additionally, with the introduction of warbands, we know that players may not want to play the story over and over. They may choose to play it on one of their characters and then play other things. And so we've made sure to provide a lot of local stories. These are stories that tell more about zones themselves, tell about the cultures in those zones, tell about the places, different individual smaller characters. You get to appreciate these different zones a bit more. You know, it's not just you, you do the main quest here, then you go to the next level, you do the main quest there, then you go to the next level. At least you'll be able to stay a bit longer in that particular zone uh, with your different character that you've chosen, or with the same one, and just continue to do the smaller missions that are there, the side quests, or maybe something that does contribute to the main quest, and then you go down to the next level, but you have a far more understanding and affinity to the previous zone. Yeah, that's nice. We've provided those in slightly greater number than we had in the past. We are making sure that we're using some of our new features as well to help tell the story. So we have been quite cognizant of the concerns that players who don't do a lot of raiding have raised about wanting to see that, that final moment. And so we're allowing players to do a story mode version of the raid to have that final fight without needing to go to the trouble of, of getting a raid group or finding you know enough friends to go defeat that boss. Same thing with dungeons. We, we added follower dungeons that allow people to play by themselves or with friends and followers that are controlled by the computer. Delves is a new feature uh, that we're really, really excited about. It's intended to help those outdoor players be able to pop in and do something fun and meaningful, and maybe they only have a short period of time. Now, Delves also have a progression system and a whole bunch of other stuff associated with it. So we want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to understand and enjoy the story in the way that they like to play, recognizing that everybody doesn't have as much time or, or opportunity to sit down and you know join a big, big group of people. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the major goals is not only with variety of things that you might be familiar with, like a lot of the cool outdoor events that you might have seen, and we want to make sure that you can kind of pick and choose the ones that you find exciting and you feel rewarded for those without feeling like you're kind of required to do everything. And then with Delves, you know, that's a new pillar of content that we're building where you wouldn't previously have been able to kind of experience this idea of like progression, but also building upon the story that we've been discussing. There's a big bad in there named Zekvir, who's kind of a lieutenant of Zalatath. And this person's in charge of looking for the world soul memories that we're gonna be learning more about as we progress through the war within. And you'll eventually be able to unlock this Zekvir's lair, which is, you know, I kind of equate it to like, Anixia's lair. So there's this big boss at the end of this experience that really feels like it's kind of the cherry on top for this progression as well as this story that we're telling as you experience Delves. What's one thing you guys are excited for players to experience? Oh, I think there's just some some fantastic local stories out there that are help helping sell some of the themes that, that we're exploring. We also have a fascinating situation where Anduin, who has had some pretty tough times and is doubting himself quite a bit, comes face to face with Farron, who is a great contrast. She's very strong in her faith in herself and in the light. And the two of them meeting and having this opportunity to talk to each other, I think this is also a really key and important moment. I'm right there with Maria. I'm just excited for people to get to meet these new characters. And there's a lot of like really fun story, not only with those individual characters, but also the cultures that the team has been building. Um, you know, a fun little detail, which isn't a spoiler, is you actually see these like lynxes that the Arathi in the zone are riding around on. And that's like a fun kind of nod to how when they set out, they actually went with some elves. And there's a, almost like this blend of cultures that are coming together in this zone. And it's really fun to kind of see all those little details uh, as they express themselves in the game. 
I think it's always an exciting time as we draw closer to the launch of an expansion where all of the content is, is going to be added to the game, even stuff that was obscured or hidden during testing or PTR. Uh, this classically represents the, the cinematics that the team has been working on for a long time and have some really amazing moments. I think the team has done amazing work on this and I can't wait to see people's reactions to that content. And also, you know, from all directions, every tool in our toolkit, we, we release more multimedia projects. I know that just recently we saw the story of Queen Anserek in the cinematic we released and that's in this vein of trying to build up our villains, give context, give backstory, give dimensionality and seeing how, how things are stirring and all of these different projects are coming together to really amplify and excite uh, around the story of The War Within and set the stage for the ongoing World Soul Saga. Thank you guys so much for joining me and talking about the World Soul Saga and the world building of The War Within. Yeah, that's it with a new era of Warcraft storytelling, The War Within. And definitely uh, the cinematics that I've seen so far, especially in terms of the Alaria storyline, that one was amazing, really. They should really focus on multimedia content like that uh, in terms of the individual characters. You know, we've seen one for Alaria, let's see one for Anduin or Thrall or Jaina or any of the other people, uh, you know, other characters within World of Warcraft. And, you know animated like that it's beautiful it's short it's to the point it's easy to understand what's happening and it was great really i did enjoy that uh, uh cinematic and yeah in terms of the world of azeroth in the war within it looks like we are going deeper and deeper down into the planet and we're going to be meeting up with the earthen and their civilization their culture very interesting to find out that they sleep on beds that have got, you know, that are heated with fire. Uh, th th that is very interesting to hear. Um, and the fact that there is a subterranean uh, level of uh, the war within where there is a crystal that acts like a sun. Uh, I, that's interesting. I actually want to know about more about that crystal. You know, how did it come to be in that position? How is it able to light up? that entire you know chasm under, under underground because that's a big subterranean level big subterranean uh, space and the fact that this light is so bright it can shine and illuminate as far as your eyes can see that's that's amazing really um and of course we also got to know about more about the nerubians and their culture and how they may perceive people who only have two legs while they have four or six legs yeah that's also quite funny uh, to hear about and you know in terms of how you as the character or should i say you as the player are going to be invested in these different zones uh, with the different functions that are going to be available like delves uh, is also quite interesting um, you know you don't only have to focus on the main storyline or main quests uh, you can go on the side quests you can go on the uh, smaller dungeons that are available for single players uh, so yeah there's a lot to do uh, during the war within and you know it's not just the main quest uh, you can just take your time and do other things uh, further appreciate the zone that you're in and understand it back to front and then you can continue on with the next one uh, but clearly they want you to stay playing the war within for some time before we go into part two of the World Soul Saga. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Next up, it is, let me just get it right here. Chris Madsen on the World Soul Saga. Wow. Cast. Okay. I didn't think Zerglings, you know, morphing into orcs would work, but. No. I didn't either. It's been, a, it's been a privilege working on Zerg orcs. Hi, I'm Scott Johnson, the host of the World of Warcraft podcast, The Instance, and today I'm sitting here with Chris Metzen. Chris? <laughs> Scott, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, it's a crazy time. We're about to launch The War Within and, you know, really kick off this massive World Soul Saga, um, which is a trip because 
you know, I haven't shipped a video game in, you know, eight or nine years. So uh, it's kind of wild going through this process again and just kind of feeling that anticipation, you know, excited to see what people think. And when the product finally gets into people's hands, it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the whole development process. Well, let me ask you this question, because uh, you reminded me of how long this has been going. I remember firing up the World of Warcraft uh, OG vanilla World of Warcraft and seeing a trailer that said, celebrating 10 years of Warcraft. And I remember then thinking, you gotta be kidding me, that's insane. That's how long I've been playing these games. And now we're 20 years on top of that, yeah. 30 years total. That has to be a little overwhelming, especially given that you were here for most of that, had a bit of a break, now you're back. 30 years of World of Warcraft, 30. Wow. Does that weigh on you? Do you feel the, the, the heat from the time? Like, where, how do you feel about how that, how that entire process has gone? I, I don't feel kind of heat or like the, the weight of time, you know, um, relative to expectation. It's really weird, you know, being a little, little older, a little wiser. Feels like 100 years ago, feels like five minutes ago, all at the same time. So when I look at this World Soul Saga, the stuff we're building right now, Thankfully, there's an immediacy um, of it all to me. It's just we live and die by, you know, how good, you know, the things we're sculpting in real time is. Trying to hold it all in your head, the weight of the past, you know, the it's kind of beyond me. I can't really, really wrap my head around like all the history all at once. I mean, there's kids graduating college right now named Jaina and Anduin. It's like, ha! <laughs> oh, that's cool, actually. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah. What? <laughs> I often find it's not all that helpful to overdwell on, you know, in, in the course of development. You, you want to keep it focused on what you're doing at the time. Uh, yeah, I think you can, you know, appreciate and reminisce on your successes once you have retired permanently. You know, once that day comes when you are, I don't want to say you're too old, but, you know, you, you feel like, you, okay, you know, it's time for me to step aside and give it to the younger people uh, or give it over to my uh, apprentice or whatever it may be. You know, by that time, you'll be able to reminisce on what has been transpiring within the company and your successes, your failures, what made you feel excited and uh, what gave you stress. And, you know, you'll be able just to enjoy uh, the fact that you've come this far with this product and it has stood the test of time. Yeah, but right now, you don't have to think about that stuff. <laughs> you know, you got a job to do. Um, so that's how I try and balance it out. Um, one day, I'm sure I'll look back and go, wow. Working on this game again has really given me more of a, like an immediate sense of gratification that just kind of keeps you focused in the moment. And that's generally, you know, where my head is at on a day-to-day -day basis. When you, you mentioned people Jaina. naming their kids after characters, and the wind. that you created, that you named, and that you <laughs> developed and, and saw Thrall. grow and evolve and everything. Something that's interesting about War Within so far, to me, is that we're seeing the gang kind of back together in a, in a much more uh, complete way. Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, in terms of Jaina and Thrall and also Andoin. Although Andoin, ooh, yeah, he, he looks bad. He really looks bad. I mean, the hair, because the Andoin I love is the Andoin with full hair <laughs> you know <laughs> with his full hair and it looks like with, with those like boys charms of his yeah that's the Andoin that I just see that I just see like he's cool and he looks chilled he looks uh, like a knight in shining armor but now this Andoin yeah, he's shaken guys he is shaken he is uh, going through a lot and the hair is you know the most telling sign that it's not the same Anduin. This Anduin is far more, you know, afraid about what's going to happen in the future. The hope is not there. You know, he needs to be given the hope from other people like Thrall or like Jaina or Khadgar or anyone else. So he needs others to now prop up his hope in him to, to for him to understand or believe that he is uh, you know, capable of changing things. He's capable of doing things better. Um, yeah, because right now he just doesn't have that trust in himself. Yeah. Oh, Anduin. 
So you're seeing Anduin talking to Thrall with Jaina nearby right. and Cadgar, my favorite worst wizard of all time, but I love him. He's there. They're all what do you mean worst wizard? All there. Yeah. And what that tells me is that we're in for some coming together of a lot of strings, a lot of a lot of stuff that has been out there for 20 years that will finally converge in some meaningful ways. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? I'll break it down. When I came back, you know, I'm like, all right, let's go, World of Warcraft. Like, what do we got? What are we making? And they were in, you know, they had already been doing um, War Within or what would become, you know, War Within um, for, for about 10 months. While I, I liked what they were building and thought it was a cool next chapter in WoW, in my head, I'm like, for the 20th anniversary of WoW, like, I want to have a feeling, like whatever the product becomes, I want to have a feeling of pulling all the toys out of the toy box, right? They like older characters, you know, the kind of macro themes that, you know, the series has been about all these years, Titans, old gods, light and dark. I wanted to feel like the anniversary was capturing, you know, like this kind of mix of all of the core flavors um, and ultimately proofing out that there has been this storyline all the way through, that everything kind of converges into this crescendo um, and in a very real way um, how the war within was shaping up they're like yeah dude like there's there's no way on earth right that you know that's going to divert the course of mighty rivers there's no way to get that done on top of what we're already in production on so that begat this idea of, of a, a larger saga I'm like okay well what if we can get there in x number of steps you know what if we can build this something just ridiculous you know but it might take a couple expansions to do and somehow, um, folks, you know, bought in on it. Like, whoa, that's you know, that's wild. Let's let's go. And so, um, Taryn Gregory and I, Taryn's our you know, you know, principal story developer. So we we work together every day, and you know, we talk a lot about like we want to involve all these epic characters, but like when they're in the scene, they eat all the oxygen, and they could just go off and solve for X. So it's, it's this balance between including all these mega characters and then finding clever ways to get them out of the way, you know, so that the player has maximum agency and the newer characters we're introducing have space to breathe and live. It sounds like it is almost an advantage to come to a, something that had already been started. If you'd come to the end of Dragonflight and started from there, that's a little big, it's a bigger buy. It's like, well, wait a minute, where are we going now? We've been flying, okay, well, what does that mean? What do yeah. we do? And instead, you were presented with some beginnings, and then you got to decide where those beginnings took you. And, and vector it a little bit. You know, yeah. the, the trick to, uh, after all these years, you know, creative direction, which I, it, even today, I don't know that I could do a thesis on, right? Creative right. direction is as unique as the person doing it and the, and the chemistry of the team that you're working with. But kind of finding that balance again of having strong ideas and kind of saying like, I, I want to go this way, right? But the, you know, the team had already been, you know, kind of constructing this thing. So it's a mix of maximizing kind of the things that they are most passionate about, the ideas that they're kind of dug in on and finding a way to bend everything towards a, a singular purpose, but boosting their sense of ownership. So when you got up on stage at BlizzCon, uh, it was pretty magical for players. I, uh, I, I can say that for myself and a lot of people that I know um, and a lot of fans of the game saw this as a, a return to something. And I think we're coming off an excellent expansion in Dragonflight, but you got up and did something that surprised everybody, which was, we're not doing the normal, here comes the next expansion, here are the features, here's the storyline in its basic way. We are going to do a trilogy of essentially games. Um, you spoke a lot about bringing, uh, you know, tying up some loose ends, but also creating a saga that is three parts, at least. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. This this World, World Soul Saga is really going to be a big one. That's why I have this, this notion in my head or this sense that, you know, this might be the end of World of Warcraft as we know it. And then maybe something new is going to come out after the World Soul Saga. You know, some drastic change, some totally different World of Warcraft game might come into existence after the World Soul Saga. But I could be wrong about that, completely wrong about that. Uh, but we'll have to just wait and see after the three uh, parts are complete. Hmm. Uh, and setting up really the next 20 years of the game, perhaps. That's very different than what any of you have done up to this point. Mm -hmm. Did that 
present unique challenges to the way you wanted to create story, the way you wanted your characters to progress, these sorts of things? Yeah, it created <laughs> all sorts of complexities. Um, you know, I, I, under the hood a little bit. It's it, interesting in how, when I came back on the team, the development process and even the conceptualizing process, you know, like, like where does the expansion take place? What's the, what are the main themes? What's the focus? Um, really had become much more democratized, right? Um, and people were, you know, had kind of found their voice in the balance of all the special teams that comprise the World of Warcraft team. Uh um, I think that's a bit risky. You know, you usually you'd want some a, a team that has been led by one vision, one voice. Okay, maybe a couple of voices, but not a lot of voices. Not a democratic type of situation where everybody gets their chance to say something. Uh, yeah, you know, usually you'd want something that is very singular in purpose and thought pro process and in application. You know, but if they want to democratize it and make it far more, uh, you know, open to everybody who's working on, on the project, then let's see, let's see how far they get with that. Hmm. Um, you know, they'd really built the vision of Dragonflight together. Um, so as I came back in, woohoo! And, you know, the, the, there were folks who were like, oh, wow, how is this going to change our dynamic? You know, in terms of the dictator, <laughs> Chris Madsen. <laughs> of you know being a creative director like will we still have a voice will we still you know um have stakes in 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 how this all shapes out so like i was saying earlier kind of learning that again and learning that balance again and and coming in as creative director and be like no you know i'm not here to be you know hyper prescriptive um with everything um as i might have been as a as a younger dude but like really listening for the team's instincts. Like, what, what are they responding to? What do they want to build? What do the artists want to make? What are they imagining in terms of that pure vision? So on top of that, the complexity of, um, I mean, we're, I don't think this gives up the ghost on anything. Like, we're building three of these at a time. Yeah. This is, yeah, I'll say it. It's New insane. It's it? insane, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, on top of the team, uh, you know, over a year ago, having committed to like an eight-week cadence. Yeah. So these folks are, we, we are moving so fast, you know? And so the, the difference here is, you know, guys like Taryn and I have to map out where we're going like way ahead of the caravan, which is its own really interesting kind of work, right? You know, checking in with everybody, does this feel cool? Everybody hip, you know? Um, I wanna make sure that we're building things that, you know, not only again, my, my instinct feels are cool and fun, but that the team is proud to build and that they feel they have a voice in and, you know, can express themselves through where the story's going, what the ideas are. We're already mapping out, you know, you know whatever, you know, 13.1, 13.2, and how they, how they actually play out and connect. And um, it's wild, but in a way you get to step back and see a far more cohesive vision and, you know, far more, um, refined idea over time. So, and without, you know, again, without, you know, spilling any beans, it's like, you know, we're already, honestly, we're already talking about, you know, the, the next What's few, the next? you know, post, you know, uh, upwards of like 17. Yeah. And it's just, it's just keeping the, the conveyor belt going, you know, you know, it's like we're loud and clear, you know, the fans want more content, you know, more regularly. So, right. Um, in a way, just staying ahead of that curve and making sure that everything, again, is of purpose and telling this much longer story, it's been a blast. You know, the, the creative, the pure creative on Warcraft, you know, for the past year and a half has been, how would I put it, over such a long span of time, I want to say it's one of the most nuclear creative phases I've seen for Warcraft. But the pace is wild. Yeah. Right, like yeah. the pace is wild, and it's like I'm I ain't 30 anymore, so we joke around all the time, like, oh, you know, we need to start instituting, you know, company naps in the middle of the afternoon <laughs> uh, for the old folks. But it is, it has been pretty amazing. That's a great yeah. way of uh, thinking about it. Speaking of personal connections to characters and story, somebody close to you who I think is a very wise human once said online somewhere that Chris is. Anduin in some ways, kind of worn out, beaten up by <laughs> a straight <laughs> period of like nonstop work. True. Right? But also on the <clears throat> other end of it, he's a little bit he's a little bit back to being thrall again. And those two characters represent these two parts of who this person is. How much of these characters moving forward or even in the past have 
represented you where you were in your life? Like uh, some people say, well, the er the early versions of these characters are so much. They were so metal. Like even Torin chieftains, <laughs> they look like you know these metal yeah. dudes and everything. And now they're they're aging, right? They're maturing. They're moving on in the world, like you are, like everyone who's worked on this does. Like that's time. Do you think that's a fair thing to say that we'll see these characters? change and evolve in the same way that maybe you have and, and, and they're kind of your avatars. Yeah, no, I know where you're going. So there's kind of an A and a B there. Like the, the B, which is easier, is certainly we want to push these characters forward. We want to show some aging. We are currently doing that. But yeah, we, we talk about that a lot. There are many new characters over the arc of the, of the saga that um, we don't want to be just one off. We want them to be, you know, pals and, um, you know, working together to, you know, solve these big problems. Slowly, they are setting the foundation for the next generation of Anduins and Thralls and Janas and Khadgars, you know, because, yeah, they are growing old. They can't live forever. <laughs> or maybe they can because this is a game. But, yeah, you know, eventually they will also have to pass the baton to a new group of heroes, you know, a new, new defenders of Azeroth. Mm. Um, but certainly the, the characters that have been around a while, we're, we're trying to kind of find a way to like capture that age up, not necessarily age out, but like, okay, so in that cinematic at BlizzCon, you know, um, they went in and put like gray streaks in yeah. Thrall's hair. I'm like, oh. It looked great. It was, it got me. It's yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. And just Anduin, you know, staring you down. It's like, our, our little boys all yeah. grows up, you know, it's, it's. You feel for him. You're supposed to feel for him, right? Which was the point. But yeah. just the idea that these characters are moving through their own continuum um, and progressing and moving through stuff, like, what a trip. You know, looking back from, from where we started um, you know, to the point where these are you know, fairly fully realized characters um, within this setting. And it's just incredibly satisfying that way to, to see that progression. Um, and certainly us as storytellers, as people, you know, as, as we, you know, it's not necessarily... It is certainly getting older, but it's also just experience over time. You know, li big life moments, becoming parents, you know, become, you know, sure. finding love, finding your career, all these big kind of life, you know, hurdles. It's like, you know, I tell folks all the time, like, don't be afraid to pour yourself into this stuff. You know, even when you are like, oh God, will the people down the hall dig it? You know, will, will I be judged? Like, yes, probably. But the answer is you're an artist, go get it, right? S find your truth. Because often when, you know, we're pulling from a place of, like, deeply personal experience, someone's going to feel that on the other end, on the other end of the line, you know, as you're playing the game. It's like some of those themes that really matter, whether, whether you're a writer, quest designer, narrative folks, cinematics, you know, like the, the game design, you know, like everyone kind of pours themselves into their, into their craft. And the more genuine that is, and I, I think sometimes the more risk you take, I think you get more genuinely affecting content. I think people feel... Nowadays, it's not so simple to do that, I think, <laughs> because, you know, the, the, there are political checkbox that need to be ticked, if I can say that, you know, and sometimes the things that you are thinking about in your artist mindset might not, you know, correspond or colorate with the with the political expectations when it comes to the types of games you know people are playing nowadays um yeah there, there are some sometimes there are things that you want to appear in your game or in the product but then they don't really conform to the investors or to the politically correcting of society's standards yeah that might be a problem i think um but otherwise yeah definitely if you're the if you're an artist believe in your work you know even though other people might not believe in it or appreciate what you are doing here but you know try your best to explain it as much as possible as easy as possible and you know just believe in your work just do it and i'm sure there are, are people out there who play the game who will understand your blood, sweat, and tears. Definitely. Mm. Feel that. They feel you in it one way or another. There are many themes embedded in the World Soul Saga evidenced by different characters. 
that are that are very pointedly things that I think today or I'm struggling with today um, for sure. But again, I think about it in terms of like as as the team's you know, creative leader, um, that's not the job as much. I, I often I think the job is like trying to learn to call them out, you know, and challenge them to kind of breathe their own experience into it um, as opposed to pouring my own in. Um, so it's, it's a balance. Well, I assume that's what, over time, you have a character, let's we'll stick with Thrall for a minute. He's, you know, probably the most well-known of the Chris Metz and certainly voice him. So until they, know that, better, until they find yeah. somebody better, uh, maybe you'll age out of it. I don't know. We're getting there. <laughs> Um, but no, uh, that you've breathed enough life into that character and given them enough direction over so much time that I, that I have to think, in a lot of cases, they start to run on their own gas. And while I'm not asking you to tell me if there's any tragedy coming at all, we're not even suggesting it here. I, I, have, a, I have a kill list. Do you? I've got like my, my top 12 <laughs> characters, like they're all going. Why is Cadgar at the top of the list? <laughs> I kid, there's, I love it. What? Yeah, there's, no, there's no kill list. All right, good. Good. But you know what I mean? You Ah no, what was that look? Chris, what what was up with that look? No, no, I don't trust you. <laughs> I don't trust. What's with that look? No. There's a kill list. Oh my gosh. You might find yourself going, well, it might be time for character X to take a character dive. We, we you know, so there's no, I'm kidding, there's no kill list um, necessarily. Uh, but we do talk about this stuff all the time. And the only, you know, when you start talking about knocking off main characters, it's not a small thing. And, and usually that is in service to, in the, in the general story you're developing, if you really need to punctuate, you know, you know dramatic stakes, the easiest thing to do is ask, ask Lucas, blow up a planet or, you know, knock off a main character. Tyrion Fordling, for example. Tyrion. Remember that? Yeah, I do. I remember I do. that. I'm still, I'm still gripping on it. So does this mean that Sylvanas is still going to come back one of these days? Please, you know, she needs to come back. We need someone like her. <laughs> we need someone like Sylvanas. You know, we need the Windrunner sisters to be back. You know, Alaria, uh, uh, Sylvanas. Or who's the third sister again? Uh, I forgot her name now. Is it Vanessa? Vanessa Windrunner? I, I can't remember. But it starts with a V. Yes, we need all three sisters to be back and fighting for Azeroth. Yeah. And Quilthalas. Mm. Yeah, that was rough. Um, <laughs> no pressure though, I'm just saying, it was no, a rough moment. No pressure, you know, so we do, we do talk about it from time to time, but we try and frame it with, you know, the, the greatest gravity possible and trying to be clear that, you know, this franchise has another 20 years in it. You know, it's this big ongoing idea and losing critical characters is costly. So it's, you know, we talk about it from time to time. Um, I won't tell you, we won't lose anybody over the arc of the saga. Those types of moments are all about establishing stakes and that emotional, you know, um, engagement from the, from the player ultimately, so, you know. Does it, does it help populate the World Soul Saga as a creative place to know that over the last few years, while you were gone for much of it, the team has, has made a real effort or a priority out of having allied races discovered in the world that players can not only unlock but then be and might prefer over the originals or whatever like this additional diversity for choice seems like a really potent way to, to fill your world with more interesting characterization rather than just well it's orcs and humans and a few others yeah I, I, I love it, you know, just, just old school D&D &D and you know, all these options on, you know, player expression, what kind of, you know, what, what, what culture you want to be from. I love that kind of stuff. So opening that up, especially like, you know, Battle for Azeroth and, you know, the, the inclusion of all these new silhouettes and flavors or whatever I thought was awesome, actually. And even the ones I didn't think I would play, um, I wound up, you know, I rolled a Volpera yeah. uh, Hunter. And then I, I consistently dress him like Robin Hood from the old <laughs> Disney movie. So it's like, I, I actually really dig a lot of the flavors that have been added over time. Like it's, it's in my opinion, the water's warm, everybody in the pool, you know, I think WoW can stretch and um, grow to, you know, encapsulate all of these flavors. I think giving you know, players more options, more visual options is awesome. At the end of the day, I think 
you know, erring on the side of, you know, player choice, player agency is, is, is the right move, like why you're playing this game in the first place, right? When you imprint, especially when it's your character, when you imprint on a, on a look or a vibe or, you know, like a, like a vision that you're, that you connect with, it's like, go, yeah. get it. So let's bring it full circle to what is imminent, which is the war within. Players have a lot of expectations. Uh, some of it is based on just excitement because there is a three-part saga coming. They're not yeah. used to that. There's a whole new structure to this. So what would you say to players who are pins and needles about this next expansion, the start of the big grand story? As we were talking about earlier, we've never been in a situation where we've shaped the whole giddy up, you know, all at once. So there's the adventure component of the War Within, and then there's the max level campaign, and there's the, you know, the, the subsequent patches, and it's all been designed to kind of play out over time. You know, narrative threads and sinews kind of, you know, linking everything together. It's, I, Personally, a little biased, but I, I think it's off the hook, right? Um, at the end of the day, I would want people to remember it is still only, however, part one of a of a much, you know, a much larger narrative. Um, and I would want people to look at it that way. You know, it's it's meant to rise and you know crescendo with its own max level campaign. We are. Will I be expected to walk in quest one and yank the sword from the planet? Oh, interesting. That's an interesting one. Uh, I would say to that. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, actually, the sword, the resolution of the sword um, that we started with at BlizzCon, um, actually, that's a 13 thing. Um, we're going to build to that, um, and it's a, oh, it's a doozy. Um, One I, I thought maybe they would start, you know, dismantling the sword somehow, start mining its material, you know, from the hilt all the way down to the sword uh, as it touches the, the 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 ground. I thought people would start dismantling it slowly but surely uh, but yeah okay it looks like someone's going to be pulling it out but who is that going to be it's well, not simply yank a sword from Azeroth I would even say you are not prepared for that moment and leave it at that but it, oh. it is a 13 issue ultimately you know things like 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 Zalatathi we've been doing a lot of work to kind of build her up um, as a very different kind of villain um, she is not like a Deathwing type, you know, villain where, you know, just he's flying and burning everything and like, oh crap, you know, we're gonna, you know. Like. It's kind of like Game of Thrones with her. With Zalateth, it's like Game of Thrones. I like it. Clearly he's where the storyline ends. She's built in such a way that like, we're gonna be confronted by her and face her multiple times over the arc of the saga. Um, so it's not, it's not gonna be this, you know, one and done type like, oh, you know, she's the, you know, she's the raid boss. Um, you know, she's meant to, you know, kind of... That's how they, uh, you know, kind of did it with Razageth. <laughs> you know, I still kind of feel sad about what, what happened to her. But yeah, clearly she, yeah, she had her, her time to talk to the dragon aspects and, you know, to show her power. And, you know, she tried here and there just to try and disrupt uh, the, who was it? The, the, the blue dragonflight aspect, you know. And yeah, eventually towards the end when she was trying to free her incarnate brothers and sisters, you know, it came to the point where she had to be slayed. And that was it. That was going to be the end for her. Uh, so with Zalatath, it seems like she's going to be a recurring uh, you know, antagonist in the story for all three parts. And that's good. That's good. You know, like I said before, she in terms of her character it's like game of thrones you know you'll be seeing this character and you'll be trying to defeat her but she's too powerful for you in the beginning she'll still be too powerful for you in the second part and in the third part you might have a chance <laughs> you might have a chance to finally defeat her but who knows what will happen you know and in those three parts uh, she'll still be uh, you know conniving and, and manipulating and uh, trying to get things into her own advantage. Just like if it were in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Hmm. You know, weave in and out of events over time. Uh, so that's something I would say. But definitely the sword thing sticks in my head. You know, like certain of these themes are, are built to play out over time. Um, so I hope people are 
into that. I hope they're into you know a, a longer form engagement. Because in a way, you know, so many of our expectations kind of you know crystallize around like, well, wait a minute, I didn't get the the full meal I was expecting in 11.0. It's, it's not built to be that. It's built to be part one. So buckle up. You know, the the ride will be, I hope, insane and insanely fulfilling. Going back to that that promise of the the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft, like. I want this saga to feel like it is just the perfect crescendo of 20 years of storytelling, you know, as we as we said at BlizzCon. Yeah, there there is a sense that we are fulfilling something. The the 20 years came and 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 will end this November. I guess November's launch, right? Yeah, 20 year anniversary will be this November. Yeah. And there is a feeling, I can tell you from the player side, of really coming to something special. And I know that puts pressure on the team when, when players collectively have an idea that they think should happen, and then the team's like, well, we're kind of going a different way. But I don't know that I've felt this much positive feedback in a long time about just where things are headed. And nobody says that about a 20-year-old property, usually. Usually there, we're like, There's not hey, a lot of precedent enough. we have, right? Like, that, that's the same contiguous project. There's plenty of game, you know, yeah. game series run for 20 years, no question. But like, it is honestly a blessing and a, you know, often, um, sometimes a hindrance, just trying to, you know, sift through the sheer volume of all of these details. Uh, poor Sean Copeland, right? You know, just trying to keep it all, you know, make it all make sense. Um, but it is also its, its principal strength you know, particularly because it's an MMO and a video game, because you've lived these moments. You didn't just passively watch, you didn't just, you know, read a book or watch a movie. Um, you've lived these moments and they matter and there are stakes, you know, so as complex as it is to try and push the world forward without breaking everything that came before, which is its own kind of challenge, it's a very noble challenge, right? Um, it's a privilege to <laughs> tread water in this complexity of this setting. After all of these years, it's amazing that it's still the same stakes. It's still the same world that you've always known. Well, there's a future I see where you're, you know, reclining in some sort of chair. With the blanket over my blanket knees. Blanket over your knees, fire. keeping you warm, and you're looking back and you're thinking. Telling kids to stay wow. off my lawn. I yeah, know, exactly. And they're all in their haptic suits playing whatever version of WoW they have. And, <laughs> and looking back at grandpa's accomplishments, and I think it looks like something to be pretty proud of already. Well, I for one could not be more excited about this next expansion and the entirety of the world at Soul Saga, and I think you and your team should be proud, and I wish you guys nothing but luck in the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much, Scott. It was good fun. <laughs> that was hard to get that. Okay, that is it with Chris Madsen on the World Soul Saga uh, World of Warcraft cast. Um, and yeah, you know, he was explaining to us uh, how it felt like coming back to World of Warcraft after so long, after like a pretty long break. Um, and the fact that the anniversary is also coming up soon and how, you know, him as the creative director, how he wanted to steer this ship into a brand new path but also keeping up with the same tradition the same uh, culture the same characters from past expansions and bringing them over into this new uh, three-part sagas expansion and you know how he also had to manage the expectations of his other uh, you know team uh, team mates or yeah you know other people who are working on the same project you know <coughs> where they in the past had a far more democratic sense of contribution and instead of like a singular vision, a singular voice, a singular command structure, you know, making the decisions, making the ultimate decisions, uh, where Chris uh, comes from that type of culture, now he has to adapt into this newer culture of hearing other perspectives and, you know, seeing other viewpoints being added into the storyline and you know he says yes it was a bit challenging in the beginning but uh, he's learned how to manage all of that and he is using it to uh, the fullest effect and that's good that's good to hear uh, from Chris and you know in terms of the different characters that he uh, contributed in creating 
uh, how they are also going to be uh, having an important role to play in the uh, World Soul Saga. Um, like people like Anduin, people like Thrall, uh, you know, like Khadgar and Jaina also coming in. You know, the, the old team coming back together, helping out the character players. Uh, and, you know, how important their storylines, their backstories, how they have developed over the years is also going to be uh, contributing to this world world soul saga and the newer characters who are also coming in how they are also going to become a fresh new perspective on things you know because uh thrall uh Khadgar, jaina um anduin they are veterans now they are veterans from many many conflicts many many situations that they've gone through you know many of them have lost family members uh they've lost their homes they've lost uh, part of themselves and they are veterans from a time when azeroth was in complete chaos non-stop back to front in and out you know and now there's newer characters who are coming in who have a different perspective from things and who have a far more should I say positive mindset especially when it comes to Anduin you know there are other characters who have a far more positive mindset compared to him and yeah it's going to be interesting to see how how all these characters mingle uh, contribute to each other's growth and you know help each other through this very difficult time you know battling against Zalatath who like I've said before she knows all of these people back to front she knows her enemy But she does not know the newer characters. So the newer characters are going to be a new mix into the storyline that are going to make it even more entertaining and difficult for Zalatath to have a complete, you know, checkmate victory over the forces that are defending Azeroth. Uh, So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see all of this come uh, into existence. And, you know... World of Warcraft has been here for a very long time, for almost 30 years or 20 years now. Um, and I also see it continuing to exist for another 20 or 30 years. Um, you know, in terms of the current characters that we know and love, I don't know how long they will be with us. We'll see during the World War Saga who dies. <laughs> who who dies and who lives because Chris, I, I don't trust Chris you know, there's something there I, I think there is a kill list, we just don't know it and maybe some of the characters that we love and cherish are going to die we don't know, we'll see uh, but yeah, you know, I think with the World World, world Soul Saga uh, you know, they are somehow passing the baton to newer characters, you know, to newer storylines that are going to be coming out um Yes, it will be a slow and gradual process. It's not just going to be immediate. But I think, you know, this is like the beginning of passing the baton to newer people uh, to take over. Um, But, you know, definitely, I think this World Soul saga is going to be very interesting uh, for the players to, you know, go through, to comb through and to enjoy. And, you know, I think... I think I need to plan... For myself to finally enter into world of warcraft i think i really do need to instead of me just discussing it and you know analyzing cinematics and uh, reading your guys comments about uh, world of warcraft i think i need to also join in on this game um yeah i think i really do mm. before i be before i'm left behind totally and completely <laughs> i need to also get into it uh, just like Hearthstone, uh, which was also quite fun. So yeah, definitely that's a that's a uh, an ob- a, a mission, an objective that I need to complete. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably in this year or next year. I'll see. I'll see. Yeah. Okay, guys, that is it. Uh, remember, if you want to check out the original videos as well as World of World of Warcraft's YouTube channel, the links are going to be in the description below if you like my reaction please give me a like comment and subscribe to my channel click on the notification bell if you want to be updated with my latest videos and i will see you guys again on monday with more world of warcraft uh content yes 
hopefully Monday. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.